Fire Underground, the ongoing tragedy of the Centralia Mine Fire by David DeCock recounts the history and impact of the mine fire that began in Centralia, Pennsylvania in 1962 and continues to burn to this date. The book details the catastrophic events that led to the fire, explores the responses of the community and government, and highlights the environmental and personal tragedies that followed as a consequence of the disaster. The fire started on May 27, 1962, when local landfill managers, who had been ordered to clean up the town's landfill, set fire to the garbage located in a strip mine pit next to the Odd Fellows Cemetery. This was a common practice of the time, however, on this occasion, the fire was not fully extinguished. Flames spread to an exposed vein of anthracite coal, which ignited a subterranean fire that extended through the network of abandoned mines beneath the town. Efforts to quench the fire were unsuccessful due to the complex nature of the mine system and the abundant supply of coal fueling the flames. At first, the fire did not cause immediate disruption to the residents of Centralia. The dangers of the fire became evident only slowly. Residents began to report health problems and changes in their environment, and it soon became clear that toxic gases were seeping into homes and the ground temperature beneath the town was rising to dangerous levels. The residents were dealing with the dangers of carbon monoxide and sinkholes, the latter of which tragically claimed the life of 12-year-old Todd Domboski in 1981. Decock uses the Centralia Mine Fire to demonstrate government ineptitude and lack of preparedness for such disasters. Both the local and federal governments initially struggled to take the fire seriously and respond effectively. For many years, the state and federal governments failed to provide the necessary support and resources to fight the fire. When the government finally started to understand the magnitude of the crisis, bureaucratic delays, interagency conflicts, and issues of funding continued to hamper relief and remediation efforts. The human aspect of the tragedy takes a central role in the narrative as well. Decock spotlights the stories of the residents of Centralia, depicting a tight-knit community whose lives were upended by the fire. He discusses the persistent denial, frustration, and anger that the citizens felt as they were forced to confront the government's indifference to their plight. Centralia citizens were divided on how to respond. Some advocated for putting out the fire at all costs, while others pushed for relocation assistance. Eventually, after years of inaction and worsening conditions, the government began to offer buyouts to Centralia residents. Relocation efforts were met with mixed emotions by the townspeople. While some were relieved to move to a safer environment, others were heartbroken to leave behind the place they called home. Decock poignantly captures the sense of loss and community dissolution that followed the slow evacuation of the town. In the late 1980s, Congress allocated more than $42 million for relocation efforts, and by the 1990s, most of Centralia's former residents had accepted the government buyout and had moved to nearby areas. However, a few locals refused to leave, determined to stay in their homes despite the risks. These holdouts, fewer than a dozen as the years progressed, represented the last vestiges of the community, underscoring their deep attachments to their land and heritage. Decock also delves into the environmental effects of the mine fire. The smoldering coal has drastically altered the landscape around Centralia, creating a surreal and desolate scene filled with smoke and steam poisoned land, and damaged ecosystems. The area, once bustling with life, has become a cautionary tale about the long-term environmental and human health dangers posed by such underground fires, particularly in regions where coal mining has been a major industry. Throughout the book, Decock not only recounts the physical and emotional toll of the Centralia fire, but also provides a broad view of the social implications of this disaster. He discusses the loss of a community's soul and identity as constituents are dispersed and stresses how Centralia's disaster is representative of larger issues within America's approach to industrial oversight, environmental management, and emergency response. The author explores the science of the fire, explaining with technical precision how and why the fire has proved to be so difficult to extinguish. He evaluates various methods that could have potentially stopped the fire 
discussing the feasibility and logistics of these pr procedures and the reasons for their failure or dismissal by authorities. Through this examination, de Kock questions the commitment and wisdom of those in charge, addressing the broader themes of accountability and political will in the face of public emergencies. Fire Underground, the ongoing tragedy of the Centralia Mine Fire, serves as a thorough historical account and as a poignant human story. It reminds readers of the devastating consequences that can arise from human errors and the profound impacts such events can have on communities. David Decock successfully blends investigative journalism with compassionate storytelling, ensuring that the legacy of Centralia and the lessons to be learned from its tragedy are not forgotten. You can listen to the full audiobook for free by following the URL in the description.